The BAC Mono R is the next generation of single-seat supercars to be built by brothers Neil and Ian Briggs. Mono R for us is the new reference. It is the last incarnation in terms of normally aspiration, in terms of uh, the engine itself, before inevitably to meet the new emission requirements. With Mono R, we took everything we'd done with Mono and we just turned everything up. We created a lighter vehicle, and on the other end, we, we added power. I tell our employees we're not in the car business, we're in the entertainment business, because if we have smiles on faces, it means we're doing our jobs. Today, the new Mono R is being built in strictly limited numbers. A total of just 40 vehicles will be built in the company's state-of-the-art production facility in Liverpool, England. Liverpool has always been the heart of everything that we do. It's got an extremely rich history in terms of manufacturing, world's first in terms of design and technology, but it's the centre of automotive excellence. It has been for, for 60 years. BAC, or Briggs Automotive Company, to give it its full name, employ a small team of 30 people split between design and production. They have built 125 of the original Mono supercars to date from their 2,000 square meter production headquarters. The car we'll follow will spend 162 hours in build here. It's being made for a customer in the UK who wants every detail of his vehicle to be unique. Total cost, just over a quarter of a million pounds. The heart of the operation is the main build hall where 12 people work. Here, all of the elements of the car, from the engine and seats to painted bodies, are assembled. Five vehicles are in production at any one time, and each car takes 162 hours to complete, using 1,300 individual parts that are totally unique to the mono arm. The Mono R's engine is supplied by Mountune, a race engine specialist. Mono R for us is, is the new reference for everything that we do. First, if we talk about its power, the engine is the most powerful, normally aspirated, specific output engine in the world. What we mean by that is the power that it creates versus the capacity, so it's 343 brake horsepower out of a two and a half litre engine. You know, the previous record holder for that was Ferrari. Each new engine takes over two days to modify and tune. The engine of Mono R is particularly unique. It's a two and a half litre, four cylinder, normally aspirated engine. It has our own unique dry sump uh, that's fitted to the car that allows us to position the engine as low as possible. The engine revs to 9,000 RPM. So because of this, we've gone to a billet crank that gets remachined in order to allow us to rev the engine. And what we see is a power delivery curve that just keeps on going and going and going and going as the car accelerates. And what that delivers is some quite earth-shattering performance stats. So the car is the fastest rear-wheel drive accelerating car in the world. It'll go from zero to 62. Uh, traction limited at around 2.6 seconds. Top speed is over 170 miles an hour. Working at the limits of engineering, this engine gets hot. But the Mono R has a striking new feature which doesn't just look cool. The airbox, in essence, if anyone's ever driven along as a kid with their mouth open out the window and their, their face is flapped in the wind, you'll realise there's a lot of force of energy that enters. And so this is exactly that same principle. Air enters here, uh, it goes through a filtration system that's inside, and then it's then fed uh, into the intake of the engine. Uh, and because it's being forced in, it basically creates a positive pressure. That positive pressure means that we can put more fuel in and more fuel combined with the higher revving output of the engine means that we can make more power. A single-seater supercar is about to receive its record-breaking engine. We're just trying to get the bottom holes lined up first and then hopefully the top will go in. The design of the original Mono was created by the team who started the business and was born out of a simple idea. When we started the original journey with Mono, the car didn't exist. And one of the biggest influences, I guess, is the robot in the All Is Full Of Love video by Bjork. And what you see in that video is a mixture of mechanical components uh, in the mechanism around her arms and her shoulders, and then you see these lovely organic panels that give the robot the form. And that is, in essence, what you see on Mono. The initial premise was to try and create something that was lightweight to be used on track, but also street legal. 
So this is the, the original incarnation of a BAC mono, which we started designing, I would say, probably about 14 years ago. Making their own car had always been a dream for brothers Neil and Ian Briggs. I've always loved cars ever since, well, my earliest memories as a child. I used to attend car events. There was always this desire to create a car that we wanted to own. There was a desire to show the world what we could do if we wrote the brief, and that came together in 2007. The ultimate goal was to achieve the optimal performance on track. Just like a Formula One car, that always meant the mono would be a single seater. And putting somebody in the center and being able to have everything in a straight line behind you gives you this great opportunity to have the airflow around all that. As a totally unique car, designer guy literally started with a blank piece of paper. You've got to have a basic form that you want to at least get you on the right track. And the easiest way of doing that is obviously to utilize the pen. The first car involved a lot more handwork in a way because we created a clay model. But yeah, I still think trying to iron out some of the details with a pen is the quickest way of conveying ideas between colleagues and also being able to look at something and decide whether you like it or not. The original mono went on sale in 2011 and BAC went on to make over a hundred vehicles. The first car, was manufactured in 2011, and we started redesigning that probably eight years after that, so 2019. And it's all about progression. And it's not just progression of form, it's, it is kind of like fashion in a way, but it's not just aesthetic, it's a, a lot to do with technology. A major factor in the design of the mono R is to minimize weight, and every effort is taken to save every single gram. The new mono R is lighter, faster, and for me, an aesthetic tour de force. With the introduction of graphene into the lamination schedule, we are able to create more stiffness. It gave us a lot more scope, I think, to create what we really wanted to create. Specifically, you'll see some really nice thin edges and, and still a lot of stiffness in the part. I can attest to the fact that having graphene in the resin does add a lot of strength. The new Mono R has a more stripped back design than the original, with even more negative space around the car, which has multiple benefits for the design. It's the first time we've gone to a twin tailpipe on any of our vehicles. We've also combined the rear lights into one single unit. It looks very Formula One-esque and inspired by the rear of a Formula One car. Incredible carbon work here. This is where the number plate goes, because this car is, remember, road legal. Everything that we've done on, on this vehicle has a very positive effect. I, I've not seen anybody who's seen the car for the first time have any reaction apart from wow, because it is a, it's a sculpture, really. We often refer to the car as being a car designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Obviously, the price point of the car is, means that it's accessible to a certain uh, high net worth individual with a passion for driving and a passion for cars and a beauty in the engineering. 